Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper. Today we're talking about the constructed response section for the special education test 5543. Now in a previous video, if you haven't watched it already, I go through the overall strategy for the constructed response for any Praxis exam. So I recommend watching that first, but this particular video is gonna talk specifically about the 5543 constructed response for the special ed. Let's get started. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the overall strategy, but we're going to apply it to a specific question to the 5543. Let's go back and check out the blueprint for this particular exam. So this is the 5543. We have 75% of the test is gonna come from the selected response, which is the multiple choice. And then we're going to have 25% is going to be for this constructed response. There are three constructed response questions at th three possible points each. So you can get up to nine points on this uh, particular part of the exam. Now, in a previous video, I go through the strategy more in depth and the rubric. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. But let me just review the rubric one more time as it is in context for us to do this task for special ed. To, so to get a score of a three, and that's what I want, right? I want a score of a three. The response in this category appropriately addresses all parts of the question. This is going to come directly from the task. All right, and we're gonna break down that task in just a second. We're also going to show a thorough understanding of any stimulus. So this might be a chart, this could be a graph, this could also be um, a scenario, um, it could be some sort of data. Whatever it is, you have to figure it out, take a look at it and break it down. Then we have exhibits a strong knowledge of students, subject matter, pedagogy, facts relevant to the question. These are gonna be your strategies um these are going to be your accommodations um it's going to be your differentiation how you talk about the data all of that so you're going to need to know some special ed lingo here probably some um literacy lingo mathematics um, skills lingo things like that so that you can actually get specific on what you're going to do and then this last bullet which i think is the most important is provides specific details everything you say is supported by details and when i say detail i mean specifics not just an over you know arcing statement or a generalized statement oh I, uh, you know administering a spelling test is would be appropriate well why what are you looking for what types of spelling errors what types of words get specific and and dig down that's going to help you get that three all right now let's take a look at a sample question that we made up ourselves at nava ed this has to do with the special ed i basically formulated it um, based on what I saw in the study companion and practice tests. So you might get something like this. I don't know what question you're gonna get, but it always helps to practice with in a, a variety of different stimulus. Just kind of get used to being able to write to really any scenario that you're given because you have no idea what scenario you're gonna get, all right? Now remember, a lot of people wanna start up here at the top and read all the way down. Well, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get lost in, in the scenario and then you're gonna get here to the task and you're gonna forget what you read and you're gonna to have to go back and reread it anyways. I say start here, right at the task, because remember that first part of the rubric says, make sure you answer the entire question. And the way to do that is by focusing on the task at hand and that's gonna be in these two bullets below. So here is my task. List two ways the teacher can differentiate and accommodate Julio so he can properly take notes that will help him on test day. All right, so I have two ways of differentiation or accommodation in note taking. Okay, so I wanna think about real quick, in my mind, I'm probably thinking of like guided notes, maybe a graphic organizer, maybe re, uh, recording the lecture so he can take notes later, maybe giving him a, um, a note taking worksheet to fill out as, as the lecture goes on. All the my specifics are in my brain right now. I still have to read the scenario, but I do have some note taking strategies and some accommodations that I'm thinking about there, all right? Now, the second one is to explain why these two accommodations or differentiation would be effective in helping Julio. So why? So not only am I going to say what I'm going to do, what accommodations, so two, I need to say why those would be beneficial. All right. Now I want to read the question stem first. I always like to work backwards. The teacher wants to further accommodate Julio so he can achieve his goal. All right, good. Let's read. Julio is a student with a processing disability. One of his IEP goals is to take notes during direct instruction of concepts. 
One of his accommodations is to be able to use those notes on classroom tests. All right, so he's got a processing thing. He wants to take better notes according to his IEP, and then he wants to be able to, or he, he is uh, able to, according to his accommodations, use those notes on classroom assessments. That is a normal accommodation for students with processing um, disabilities. However, Julio has a hard time taking the actual notes and writing down important information. Note taking is a skill. It's a, it's a skill that is uh, hard to do. So they need a lot of guidance on this. He becomes overwhelmed because he cannot write as quickly as the instruction is given, even when the teacher slows down. All right. So the teacher is slowing down a little bit to accommodate in the moment, but he's still getting frustrated. Sometimes Julio gives up altogether. Julio wants to do well on his exams and is motivated to meet his IEP goal. So he has the motivation to do this. We, as the teachers, need to help him do this through two accommodations or differentiation so that he can meet his goals. All right, so I already have some ideas in my head. What I would probably do is, because these are things I'm familiar with, I would probably provide him with some sort of graphic organizer or some sort of um, fill in the blank for notes, right? Because looking at a blank sheet of paper to write notes while the instructor is giving direct instruction is hard for people without processing uh, disabilities. So what I'm gonna wanna do is maybe map out the important aspects that I want Julio to get. And I'm gonna put those kind of in a graphic organizer type thing so he can fill in that important information. Maybe it's a concept or a, or a, a signal word. And when, I, when the teacher gives that word, he knows, oh, I need to write this down. And he starts to write it down. Um, maybe it's an actual graphic organizer with the words already mapped out for him. And maybe you signal, write this down, Julio, and you, know, you write that down. Or maybe, and, and maybe this is a, an accommodation you give to the entire class because it sounds like a good note-taking strategy anyways. And then the second accommodation I'm going to do, because this is typically a good way for um, to help with note taking is to let Julio record the direct instruction. Now, hopefully your direct instruction is not any more than like 10 minutes uh, because we don't want to lecture for 90 minutes. That is not good for students. Um, but maybe it's 10 minutes or so. Um, allow Julio to record it and then maybe go back to his desk, put on his headphones and be able to pause the the instruction and write down what he needs or fill out that note taking strategy that you gave him. So those are two ways that I, I would think to do it. So let me show you how I set this up. All right. So I have it here. Two types of accommodations or differentiation. First one, provide Julio with a note taking template. All right. Now, this is something that you could provide in the beginning of the year, the note-taking template, and perhaps, you know, uh, gradually release him from that note-taking template, right? So maybe he gets really good at taking notes, so he doesn't need the template anymore. But for now, he might need that, some sort of a graphic organizer or template he can fill out. And then number two, allow Julio to record the direct instruction and provide him time to listen to it. So not only can he record it, but then you need to give him time to throw on those headphones and uh, take notes. Okay, so those are two ways. Now, I've got the first part of the task. Now I need the second part of the task, which is explaining why. Now remember, I wanna give specific details. I wanna have a thorough understanding of what's going on. So I'm gonna to need to kind of explain myself and I'm gonna to need to do it in a manner that's clear and concise so that the reader who's grading my constructed response is can easily find the information and is more apt to give me that score of a three. Now, from my experience, this would give me a score of a three because it hits all of the rubric items under score three. All right, so let's take a look here. Because Julio is overwhelmed by the enormity of the note-taking task, the teacher can provide him, oop, there's a little grammatical error there, him with a template that will guide his note-taking. Now, is, am I gonna lose my three because I forgot the M on the end of that? Probably not, and I did that on purpose because you're typing and you do not have time to read this five, six, seven times for it to be perfect, okay? So that one little error, probably not gonna take my three away. Who knows, but probably not. The teacher can map out what is important in the lecture and set the template up as a graphic organizer. So here I have template, um, mapping out what's important, setting it up as a graphic organizer. I'm actually getting specific in the scenario. 
Then Julio will be guided as to what is important and what he should write down. As Julio becomes better at the skill, Julio can start to write down his own notes and the teacher can slowly remove the template support. So notice that I got very specific here. The template, the scenario, how it's going to be used, and even what can be done later to remove that support if he's ready for it to be removed. Let's look at number two. Another support that would help Julio would be to record the direct instruction and give him time to fill out the template or notes at his own pace. Again, I can picture Julio listening to the instruction, writing at his own pace. If you can visualize the students doing this, um, then you've got those specific details. You wanna be able to see the situation in your mind. This will also reinforce concepts because Julio will be hearing the lecture two times. All right, another specific de detail. Not only will he get it the first time around, but this will help reinforce the important concepts because now after the lecture, he's going over to his table or his independent area, putting on his headphones and listening to it again. So anything that he missed, he's gonna get that again once with the class and later on his own, pausing when he needs to. So both of these give specifics. They give um, important accommodations. Also, I seem to be, have an understanding of what a note-taking template is and why it would work. Um, I also have this understanding of like gradual release, right? Removing those supports when those supports are no longer needed, which shows I have a thorough understanding of the, um, the job that I have in front of me. Um, so all of this covers everything in that score of three in the rubric. So that's really, really important. And that's how you can approach this task. All right, so that is an example of how to approach the constructed response for the 5543. We are coming out with a special education book. If you're watching in the future, we probably already have it, but this is being recorded in March of 2021. So we hope to have our special education book and constructed response by the end of April, 2021. So if you're watching this after April, 2021, then we have it and it's probably linked up below. If you're watching it beforehand, then we are still working on it and we hope to finish it by the end of April. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel today. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you get notified when we upload new content. Let your friends and colleagues know we're here. We love working with new teachers and leaders and we want to provide you with the best content possible. In the comments below, you can let us know how you're doing and if you have any questions or other things you would like us to film. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.